<laughs> Hello and welcome to another edition of After the Whistle on this rainy Wednesday afternoon. Spring is like not even fighting to come around. Jeez Louise, this weather's trash. Man. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I didn't even come home to this. Tell yeah. me about it. I should've was like falling asleep. Just stay where I was at. And I need to make it home. Yeah, yeah, so prepare how to leave. <laughs> I would imagine, I would imagine. Nice weather. Ain't got to deal with rain. Yeah. I mean, bipolar New England weather. I mean, you know, other than why I went out there, which is obvious reasons. If you know me, you know me. Right. But, um, on the, you know, on the casual side, other than the business side, it was a fun time. You know, you, Andy, you can imagine. Almost Andy, you can imagine. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> oh, was that? you know who, ain't, who didn't imagine their season coming to an end rule was the, the Duke thought them, they had themselves a nice little roll going, thought they had a nice clear path to the Final Four, but, you know, I said it after it happened. I'm like, the only reason they got to the Elite A was uh, Houston's best player and playmaker got hurt. Well, you know, that's, a, I don't want to say a fact, but that's definitely a, a leading factor in why they definitely beat Houston. Um, it's sad for Houston because they were one of the better teams all season, and they showed that, that they was definitely destined to go to the Final Four at least. But um, shout out to Alpha Duke for winning that game. But on this side, I, I didn't see Duke having a chance against the ACC champs, you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah they were they lost to the best team in their conference. So why do you think they're going to come around and beat them now? They got bully balled. <laughs> they, them boys got bully balled by Mr. Big Man himself, DJ Burns. Thing is, this is why NCAA took this boy. College basketball is so crazy. It's literally like once you get like on a hot streak, you can carry that into the tournament because it's just a one game elimination type type of thing. So, you know, you get a nice winning streak at the end of the season going into the tournament and that carries over and that's what we that's what we're seeing from North NC State. Had they, you know, they they win the ACC tournament. I think they won like five their yep. last five games to close out the regular mm -hmm. season and now I think the, the winning streaks are like eight or nine right now for them. So it's the, the momentum for them is kind of crazy. But it was it's the second half for them. The second half has been doing them wonders. They've, they've like been a whole different team in the second half. Well, you know, I'm a strong believer in you're all supposed to finish, bend, you stop. Mm -hmm. So when you're getting warmed up in the second half, you should be rolling. Mm -hmm. And what, DJ have like 29 and like seven or something like that, 29 and six? Well, he something had, like that. I love high twenties. Yeah, had high twenties. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's Duke's. You know, what I mean, probably weak weakest point is their physicality in the paint. They they have you know, what I mean, taller taller bigs, but they, they don't have much weight behind them to stop DJ and other powerful bigs. So they have to hope they can make shots. They can stretch the floor out and you know speed the game up. But that's something that they got away from. weren't able to do against NC State. Twenty nine and eleven. Twenty nine and eleven. All right, I was close. Yeah, twenty nine and eleven seemed like what whatever Duke tried to throw at him, he had an answer for it. He's one of those big men that got good feet. So and he's got good vision. And then the disappointing part from Duke is you know for your your projected lottery round pick player only had 11 points and on three of 12 shoe and did not he didn't have the best tournament Filipowski he, he didn't have the best tournament th this year it was it seemed like it was there was like no game from him this tournament that really stood out uh, I think McCain I mean if you want to give a the person that stood out the most in the tournament was McCain but Filipowski he he didn't do what he needed to do to help well, his team win. Well, McCain was probably one of the most consistent all season for Duke, mm -hmm. even as a freshman, which shouldn't have been the case. The upperclassmen definitely supposed to be more your leaders and supposed to at least be more mm -hmm. seasoned to understand how to score and be more effective since they've been around. Right. Um, you know, I, we, we, we talk about where certain players we felt should have went, certain schools and stuff like that, and I always we, we thought that UConn was a better fit for Kyle just because of the physicality he has to develop in his game because that's one thing he's missing. It's so really the only thing he's missing because he's highly skilled, he's a seven footer, can do everything, but he's just not used to that banging in the paint, 
because of, you know what I mean, the 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 way Duke plays. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, he'll get obviously he'll get drafted, but if he, if he stayed another year, it wouldn't bother me none. Just you know, to get bigger, be be more physical, show he can be more physical, dunking on people, and just yeah. being more aggressive and be more fierce in the paint compared to just being a just 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 uh, compared to just being a wing threat. Yeah, because it's kind of like if you watch him in high school and then you watch him at Duke, it kind of feel like his game is kind of. There's like certain aspects of his game they're not allowing him to use to, or to utilize, which probably would help. Like his passing in, in high school, he was he was a good passer. Like <laughs> you know, he, well, he could create for others. But well, yeah. you know, my biggest complaint about Duke all year has just been like their system basketball compared to just letting them get loose, mm -hmm. just letting them play a little bit, like just loosen up the offense, just let them just make better reads and yeah. understand the game better compared to just drilling positions and where they need to be in sets and all that. Yeah, definitely. And uh, NC State, this will be, this actually will be their first Final Four appearance since uh, the, the 1983, I believe, since they, they, the last time they won the national title, whatever that year it was, I think it was 83 with Valvano was running around the court trying to find somebody to hug because he, oh, yeah, yeah, he was surprised yeah. they even won the game himself. <laughs> <laughs> but this is nah, the first dope. one. That's dope. Uh, UConn keeps on rolling. UConn just keeps on rolling. The the poor, the highlight of this game was a 30 to nothing run that they used, I think, in the second half. Like a 30 to nothing run. I think they said in real time, Illinois went like 15 minutes without scoring. And, yeah, that's Whoa. in basketball. You just can't go that long without scoring. Well, you know, I talked about we talked about UConn, Illinois, and I wish they didn't meet. I wish they had met like the Final Four or something like that, just because those are definitely two good teams. But you've seen just UConn just at a whole different level, <laughs> and I seen I seen them um, on Instagram when they talked about um. It's like the first like kill shot they call it, yeah. Because it was 30, 30 to all run, yeah. It's like ever or something like that individual in basketball or something since they've been keeping it the, the track. I didn't even know there was a stat. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, there isn't much you can say about this game other than UConn just continue to do what they've been doing since last year. Yeah, since the last title run. So yeah. it was just. Yeah. I know. I think they probably lost two or three guys. I think they, I know they, I know one guy got or like two of their guys got drafted, but. Yeah, a good amount of their guys came back, and you know they always got a good recruiting class that comes in. But now they're starting to get now they're starting to get like those UConn type recruits again, so they're mm -hmm. starting to pack that up. And also from this game, it just showed that uh, they need to have like more of these big games at TD Garden because I wasn't there, but from watching. It looked, it, would, it looked like it was lit in that place. A couple people that went, they said the environment was great. Uh, one of my old professors from from Emerson College, he was, he was there because he's an Illinois grad. He was like, just the atmosphere, how it was all, just the whole layout of TD Garden and the environment it was great to have to have that type of game there. And this is something we've been saying for the past couple of years now. Uh, Y'all need to have more, more like big games or like all-star games or types of games at TD Garden because y'all can say whatever you want about Boston, but y'all will have a great time. I mean, they have so many concerts out here. I don't know why they're playing around with sporting events. Right. And like, we already talked about this. Like, the high school would need to have them at the universities. You know what I mean? If they're able to, and title games and stuff like that, or regional games, and or even playoffs if possible. Just bring more fanfare. And cause like, a lot of people have no clue what these arenas are like unless they're going there for something. Right. You know what I mean? So if you never went to a Celtics game, at least you're able to experience the arena and understand what the feels like going to a college basketball game. So it will it'll make you want to go to a Celtics game. Right. And it's bring more fans in there. And just another aspect of that. So, yeah. yeah, man, I think it's great. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, UConn trying to repeat. Looking they're well on their way to repeat because I don't know how anybody's going to slow them down the way they're playing. Like, geez Louise, good luck. <laughs> All right, uh, Purdue, the mo one of the most boring teams left in this tournament. They, they found a way to not choke this year and get themselves to the Final Four. And Zach Eady with the big game, with the 41-point game, but I don't like his whole steez. I just don't like it. He's Why? To me. I don't know. It's, you know, sometimes you just... You just look at somebody, you just feel like, eh, I, don't, I don't know. There's something about you that I just don't like. There's something about Edie I just don't like. Maybe it's because he goes to Purdue, maybe. Cause 
<laughs> that whole brand of basketball is just, you know, it's, I mean, it's not appealing. I mean, I have no issue with him. Yeah. I, 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 like, do I appreciate his game? Not really. <laughs> I don't really, you, you, you know me, Luke. I don't really care to watch bigs play unless you're a skilled big, unless you're Shaq or something. Like, just dunk it on people. So, I like guys. I like guys that boogie on the court. I like people falling. I like people getting shift out your way. I don't like all that kind of boom, boom. And then, nah, man, man, that's wasting time. And unfortunately, like, he, he's going to have to develop a J, try to understand how to shoot the three ball. Just because, like I said, there'll be some teams that take a chance on him just because yeah. he's seven four. You can't teach that, and yeah. sure he can develop some skills. But he's gonna have to come into the league with more skills. So hopefully, he's been working on these things yeah. in college, and we we just not able to see it That's because what I was of. About to say, yeah. Oh my bad. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was about, no, I was about right. to pick back on that. Yeah, hopefully he's he's, yeah. the, he's already developing these things, and we're just not able to see it because of who he's playing with. Yeah. And then yeah. But <laughs> there's not the only like successful. Players from Purdue that really, in their his their whole history was like big dog. Yeah. But that's the only that's the only one I could think of. And him, he was a versatile player. Like he could True. do he could True. do everything. And right now, Edie is just a tree. He he's literally just a tree. But kudos to them though, because they you know they got a lot of heat, rightfully so, because they got bounced last year. They're trying to redeem themselves. So far, they, they've done a good job getting getting to the getting to the final four. I think this is their first one in about since 1980. I mean, I think yeah. that's really you know, like Edie's biggest thing. He's he got at least make it to a final four at least. Right. Like, so I'm glad he made it there. I'm definitely glad he made it there. Yeah, yeah. Cause I, you know, I I had them losing already uh, in a couple couple rounds ago. So, uh, but good job for them for proving me wrong. But 40 points, a double double. You know, got back at Rick Barnes for not recruiting him. Well, you know, you take that with a grain of salt, but shout out, good, good. congratulations to Purdue. Yeah, I don't think Rick Barnes was thinking too much about that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and I can see why Rick Barnes ain't recruiting him, because he's not a Rick Barnes type of player. No. Hey, Rick Barnes likes them versatile guys. This is true. Uh, all right. And then Alabama, This I, I believe this is their first Final Four appearance in school history. So that's dope. yeah, they got they got uh, they got the win against UNC in the round of 16, and then they defeated Clemson in the Elite Eight, which is like this is another team. I mean, they've been good all year. I just never really paid attention to them, but they got some guys like they, the way they play. It's it's high tempo. We're getting up a lot of threes. We're gonna speed you up, which which was worked for them. That that game against North Carolina, that the transfer with my. Uh, I think it was Montana or North Dakota, the big white guy. I don't know his name, but he was kind of the, the difference maker in that game, knocking down shots and like his help defense got a lot of blocks on that. So, but it's not. But good luck to them, though. They <laughs> made it that far. And now you gotta find a way to slow down this, this this train that's coming at you, and you, that's not taking their foot off the gas for nobody. So, I don't know what game plan. Alabama's going to use, but yeah, good luck. What are they playing? They will be playing UConn. Oh, yeah, ain't much to really say about that. We just got to see what the outcome is. I mean, I think I know what the outcome will be like. I mean, Alabama's not yeah. making it a game, we think, but like I said, you don't really know what UConn was out there doing, man, so. Yeah. They could have that one game that, you know, Carolina had, or the one game that Arizona had. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's just one of them things, man. Good guys you never going, really know. Guys going 0 for 9 and stuff like that. That, yeah, was, man. that was the funny. That was that was something else. Both of them. Both. So, you know, not, you, you, you never really know, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, all right. I'm going to go to the women's side of the bracket. It was not off. Monday night was... Big night for, for for TV. I think the game got 12 million views last I saw. Good for the good for the people watching. But yeah, we talked about it. We we didn't understand LSU's game plan. Like everybody in the building knows, Caitlin Clark wants to shoot. They know Caitlin Clark wants to shoot, but yet they was just not helping. They was just letting her get to get free shots at the at the hoop from three. They weren't double teaming her or nothing. They weren't. I don't know. It, it seems like they was just like, all right, we're going to dare you to shoot, which is kind of like 
a so, bold strategy. She's on fire right there. Ooh. <laughs> she was hot the other night. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I mean, what can you really do? The girl shoots from out of space. She she be diamond her teammates. Granted, no, like I said, I didn't think LSU was repeating. They they played sloppy basketball all season. They weren't, you know what I mean, as they didn't play as much as a unit this year as they did last year. You know, could have been the championship hangover. I'm sure a little bit of it. Like that's just how you know, it's just what it's just I wanna say human nature. But um yeah. LSU is just not that good. And some some players should have stayed where they were or should have transferred to Iowa to play with Caitlin Clark, which I felt Haley should have went to Iowa personally. Yeah, yeah it was. And, and you could yeah. just see it from, from like all season, whenever you watch their games, you could just see she just Damn. wasn't, a, just was not a good fit for her. It just wasn't a good fit. And it was kind of crazy because when she was well, in Louisville, I think she was like probably one of the leading scorers and like the yeah. star of the team. And yep. yeah. That, which is, this just show kids, this just, this just shows you. Sometimes just stay where you're at. <laughs> you know, sometimes you don't need to go play with all these other great players because uh, it, it doesn't work, and it, it definitely doesn't work. And then for LSU's case, they just got away from giving their best player the ball. Like early on in the game, they fell down early, but then they started getting Angel Reese the ball, and they were playing that bully ball, which was working. And then at some point in this game, Especially like the second and third. You look at the second and third quarter they, where they scored a total of 27 points. They got away from that. They got away. They were they were shooting they were shooting shots without getting Angel Reese the ball or even having her touch the ball on all, a certain offensive possessions. Like certain times, I know coaches would like would would emphasize get it to our best player. She doesn't have to take the shot, but make sure the ball touches their hands on, on every possession, so it, they can make life easier for everybody. Well, you know, that just happens with basketball and basketball teams when you have players that feel they're all at the same level, especially Division One basketball. Like, they're all nice. So it wasn't like they were taking awful shots. They just weren't, weren't knocking shots down. Flo wasn't really doing what she was doing in the first half and the second half. Mm -hmm. So um, then, like, Angel Reese was getting tired. I think she was, she was missing easy shots, missing free throws. So as a teammate, it's kind of hard to keep throwing it in there if they keep missing layups. And they're not as efficient as they should be because you're right in front of the basket. So, like, that's tough, too, as a guy with the big relationship. So you have to trust each other, though. So if, yeah, your big misses a couple layups, keep throwing in there, hopefully to make a couple more. And if, they, if they're if they not making them, they kick it back out to you. And then that's how a relationship continues to blossom and continues to be lovely. Oh, yeah. But that wasn't the case for LSU. So and then they didn't, get, they didn't get some calls. Like I said, I thought, I thought Angel Reese got... She got screwed on that, on that charge. The girl was still moving, and I get it. Y'all want her out the game just to make the situation even better for for Caitlin. But Caitlin don't need any help. Like I've been saying for the past few weeks now, she gonna be alright, and, and she is. So. And don't turn over the ball. Yeah, that's that obvious. Too. <laughs> <laughs> that too. You just can't turn over the ball like that, which is wild. But you know, what well, most people, some people, are gonna be like, well. LSU was too focused on other stuff besides basketball. That's probably why they lost to the to the team better than them. But hey, man, that's college basketball now. The, the, the players got a they got a lot of other stuff to deal with now nowadays too. So. But 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 that stuff is self induced though. Oh yeah, that yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. is self induced. So it's not like it's put mm -hmm. on by the university or put mm -hmm. on by the fans or put mm -hmm. on by no you decide to sign up to certain things and you want to post things and you want to get advertisements and certain things so you got to be able to manage your time and if you're going to take time from certain things you got to add you got to put more time in yeah you know what i said last year i was like the university wasn't doing her any favorites by letting her go on a whole media tour all summer after they won the national title Title game because I'm just flat because I was just like you don't let a you don't let a college player go <laughs> go on a media tour all all I summer mean, without like without somebody because it seemed like there wasn't like no no PR person or somebody from the school there with her because because I mean, even after the cut press call after the game she was talking about all the you know all the negative attention I, she got I mean she's an like, adult. Yeah. So you could you could ask her if she would like somebody to accompany her and help, you know what I mean, manage some things for her. And she has the option to say no because she's a grown woman. So there ain't, there ain't no people 
handling her and putting her in place. And so I'm just saying, like, she's an adult. Mm -hmm. So if her mama's all okay with it, and you know, I don't know if she has, I don't know, I don't know if she has both parents, but if mother and father okay with it, then I don't really care about nothing else. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, they can offer it, but yeah. I mean, she also has the right to decline it. Yeah, but then, but then you got, but then you get her on on the stage on Monday. Talk about she ain't know how to deal with all this like unwar. I like all the attention she got over the last year, and I was just like, ah, I, I think you did, but <laughs> you guys lost. And then now, now you lost. It seems like it's a pity party that that you lost. You know, it's the that's, new world we live yeah. in, bro. But after a while, people gonna get sick of that. So that's right. only you're only gonna be able to use that excuse after for so long. Right, 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 right. right. You gotta kind of like when you get thrown in that celebrity status, you gotta. You know, this, you gotta know this is what it what it's uh, what it entails, and especially when you're the most followed college basketball player on social media. So you gotta know you're gonna get a lot of stuff coming coming your towards your way that you know you could have just one phone call to you know who's the biggest star from LSU, Shaq, who's one of her biggest fans. <laughs> I mean, well, let's be real. You got like people who had no problem on Instagram. Hmm? Had no problem having the main comments and enjoying the comments they were getting, and now you see posts and, 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 and no comments at all. Right, right. So, you know, I don't get it. That, I don't know why you even care about comments in general. But. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the whole dialogue after that game uh, surrounding her, I, I just found a lot of people just saying stupid stuff when it's just like, just break it down to how simple it is. She won a national title, she got a lot of attention, she was embracing all the attention. They lose this year. Now you're bringing up all the stuff that's happened to you the past year and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? It's no, like no, <laughs> that, that does sound like a bunch of excuses because in right. reality, like, if we're going to, I wouldn't even allow people to even ask me about last year or anything else. Right, right, I would right. just say we're going to talk about this title, the national title game for the season, and that's it. Right. Uh, don't ask me nothing about last year. Last year is last year. Like, so you can't even give people ammo, even if you're just venting. Cause, right. But, you know. <laughs> I would never vent in front of a public camera. No. I wouldn't even vent in front of a camera. No. There's just certain things you just don't do. But yeah. some people feel comfortable in the camera and thinking that these people care about my story when all reality is. Or even about your feelings. The world, they, the world just don't care, man. Right, right, right. And this is, yeah. And the dial, yeah. That's like that's why I said the dialogue's been so stupid. Like people have turned this into like a gender gender war type of thing. You know, gender war. Yeah, man. It, it's stupid. And I was just like, that's that's not the case. It's just like they lost. It was her last game. I'm sure there's emotions, but you know, sometimes you gotta look in the mirror too, cause it's like you gotta look at yourself too, and be like some of the stuff I did, cause you like when all that when all that negative attention was coming your way, you didn't mind it, cause you guys were winning all these games, and you were you were embracing it, you were calling people haters and all that other stuff, and then you know. Like I think they they put it best. You can't you can't want to be the villain then cry wolf when you know when you lose. I mean that's why you got front runners and you have people who just run by you. <laughs> and then you mad you lost the race. <laughs> I don't know what you call them other people <laughs> that ain't front runners. So I guess it's just regular people in society. I don't know. I don't know. I <laughs> <laughs> Is it the run bias? Oh, uh, the bystanders? <laughs> nah, 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 nope, nope, the run bias. The run by your ass. <laughs> well, South Carolina, they've been running by everybody. They did get a tough challenge uh, in their Elite Eight matchup, but besides that, they've just been running by everybody. It's just another team, well-oiled machine, learned, learned from what they didn't do last year and, you know, how they pretty much kind of self-imploded in uh, last year. In the, it was just a moment in time. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was yeah. Just a bad moment in time for yeah. a good player. That's all it was. Yeah, but they, they learned from that, and this, and this time they just, you know, they just steamrolling everybody. And yeah, good luck to NC State. Yeah, that's really all we got to say on that because, you know, they've been doing what they're doing. You know, how many times they got national? Was it they two time national champions in the past four years? I think I believe so. Yeah, like three or four. It might be four or five because I think Stanford won one recently. Yeah. So yeah, but shout out to them, man. They doing it. Yeah, and it's it's kind of cool. We have interesting thing though we, that we have in this tournament on both on both sides. We got 
NC State boys and girls in the final four, and then you got UConn boys and girls in the final four, which we just, I said, we just glossed over UConn, the UConn-USC game, which was pretty, was a very good game, actually. But UConn just had a little more veteran leadership than USC in that game, especially when they got that lead late. And they was they were making the big shots, the big plays down the stretch. Because every time USC cut it down, UConn had possessions where they just made the right plays and they got bulk, they got baskets. Yeah, right? um, I felt felt like Juju could have picked the spots a little better, but the girl's a freshman. She's amazing. We talked about it all year. So um, yeah, she she's had a regular freshman game for for her standards in my eyes. Mm -hmm. She had 29, but I'm like, nah, she could have had 35, 40. Right. If she would have been, if she would have just made certain reads and just, you know, played a little tougher. But that UConn team was very physical, very seasoned. Had had a lot of vet guys and wings. Yeah. So you can't get mad at that. Like I said, Paige is a senior. So a lot of, a lot of the best players in the tournament are seniors. Yeah. In regards to this one lone freshman that's really killing it. Mm -hmm. So, um. Yeah, man. Shout out to her, man. And what also would have helped USC would have been the bench. They got three points from their bench as opposed to USC. If they went to their bench, they got 11 points from their bench. You kind of, I know the rotations should get shortened in the tournament. You know, they're not playing as many players, but need a little more than just three points no, no, you from do. your reserves. No, no, you do. But that, that's kind of like the whole thing all season. But right. I think they average definitely more than three points all season. They, they, yeah, they, they. yeah, man, you, UConn is just UConn. Like, people forget they, they lose games now. They, that That's the only difference between UConn now and UConn of old. They just happen to lose games. <laughs> and? <laughs> and it sounds, I mean, to cut you off, yeah. but it sounds crazy because they're like, what do you mean people lose, the younger generation, what do you mean they lose games? No, like legit, like, yeah, there we, were years where UConn didn't lose. Yeah, they went like three, four years without losing a game. Yeah, so like. <laughs> yeah. I think they won like four straight national titles and yeah, they didn't so lose they a game. Might, yeah, so they might lose five games in a season this year, and that's rare for us. It's, it's never going to be the same. For, like, you don't understand. Like, for just, instance, let's put it in perspective. Brianna Stewart won four straight national titles. <laughs> and that, and that's not even that, right. And that's not even the UConn we are talking about. Right. <laughs> right. So, Maya Moore, I think her UConn career. I think they lost four games in her four. Yeah, she was there four years. I think they lost four games. So that's on average one loss each year. And that's. <laughs> Not even, even the got, female UConn teams we are talking about. We haven't even got into like the early 2000, mid 2000 teams, or even before that, the 90s teams. I mean, I think they really got good with Rebecca Lobos last year, her senior year, what was the thing when they run on junior year, and then Bird and Taraji came yeah. in there, started kicking, kicking yeah. down things, and and we yeah. haven't even talked about Tennessee. <laughs> You know, you, you know. I had, I had to put the to, 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 I had to put it on to Shamika. A lot of people know Shamika Holesclaw, but the coach for Tennessee is I think the wing that played with Shamika that won it three years in a row with her. Oh, uh, currently? Yeah. Oh, okay. The blonde lady. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, we you see we you just just to let you know how you know because people were so caught up in this moment right now with all the star with all the stars now. And, you know, people trying to say who's the best of all time. And we haven't even – we just broke down, like, a couple players from, like, a certain amount of time. We haven't even gotten into, like, other teams, too, that didn't win at all. But they'd, they'd, they'd have these one-loss season, and the team they lose to is the team that wins the national title. Yep. <laughs> Yep. That, that just lets you know just how deep it is with the college with college hoops on the women's side. It's just mm -hmm. like we got so many layers that we could talk about with like some of the great teams that never won a national title, and because they didn't, and the reason they didn't win a national title, it was because of UConn and Tennessee. Yep, literally it. That is a fact. Oh man, that's funny. That's a whole other show in itself. <laughs> it is. Um, <laughs> ah, let's go to athletes' corner. This one was funny. This. This is a cool one, though. Now, we had the, so the way this one happened, go to the, the Lynn Classical freshman team. The, the way this happened was the, their, their coach again promised them. He said if they, if they went undefeated, he'll talk to me about getting them to come on. And you know, I was like, all right, if they go undefeated, we'll do that. 
<laughs> they went undefeated. That's dope, man. That's so we reward for a successful, I can't talk today, successful freshman season. So we gonna go to that and we gonna come back. There was some, I have stuff on this rundown, but you know, today some breaking news stuff happened. So yeah, we'll be back. Hello and welcome to another edition of Athletes Corner. And as you can see, I got the classical freshman team here with me, uh, Coach Berto. Got the guys. Gonna let the guys introduce themselves before we get this start. This thing started. Make sure you say your name and your position. Yo, my name is Jenzel Pimentel, and I play power forward. Dario Center. Ron, power forward. Mateus, point guard. Uh, my name is Jeremy, and I play at the three or five. My name is Brian Adias. Play like three positions. <laughs> <laughs> Name's Elijah. Play small four. My name is Louis Tan. I play point guard. My name is Darren. I play shooting guard. My name is Jadiel, and I play three. All right, fellas, coach, 16 and 0 freshman go. season. Incentives was if they got if they went 16 and 0, they'd come here for the win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up. <clears throat> um, as the season was unfolding, I was giving the guys some promises, um, and this was one. Yeah, this yeah. was the very last one, so um, I'm glad you brought this on. Yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, yeah, hey, yeah. the undefeated is undefeated. I don't, Let's go. No matter man. what it is, uh, what was it about this group that you guys were able to uh, to accomplish accomplish that feat? Um, we had, for the first time in my career here, we actually had a bench. So um, I feel like that's what put us over the hump and we were able to get um, big wins. Yeah. Because uh, we did face challenges along the way. And um, I knew this team was special when I picked them. Um, but having that bench, uh, being able to make substitutions is what helped us get over the hump. Yeah, yeah. Um like, what was, what was it about those guys um, that you really enjoyed coaching? Or what, what did you see before the season even started that you guys could do something and like the skill set that you saw from these guys? Um, yeah, they were, um, <clears throat> they were very competitive during tryouts. Um, these guys obviously right here, there's a few missing, um, but they stuck out to me. Um, they showed the will to win. And um, yeah, I knew, I knew right away we were gonna have a, a good season. Mm. Um, and then as the season unfolded, we 4-0, and 5-0. and um, Right away, we started talking about the undefeated season. Like, yeah. I didn't hold back. People in the program kind of saw how special they were. And um, yeah, I just started making those incentives, like you said. Yeah, at, what, at what point, or at which game was um, things kind of like, coming together and they started because each game you get better in it. Each yeah, game so is a challenge. Which, which game you think is the one that really <coughs> had them really um, focused, it, locked in? It was around game six. We played Somerville and uh, we actually was playing really sloppy. And um, we had already started talking about the undefeated season. Um, but I remember during the timeout uh, talking to them and saying, you know, this isn't this win or loss today is not about um, the undefeated season. Mm -hmm. It's, I would, I would be upset if we come out with a loss because they're not better than us. And um, I remember they responded. And after that, we actually w ended up winning by one at the buzzer mm -hmm. on a layup. And after that, I knew in my heart that we were gonna still have challenges, but I, I had a feeling we were gonna go all the way all and, right. and do it. Yeah, fellas, for y'all, um, any one of y'all can answer this. What, what was it like just being undefeated on the freshman team? And just, um, you know, some of you guys were, went up, got moved up to JV and played both ways, but you played two ways, I should say. Um, what, what was just that like as, as you guys kept getting better and, and better as the games went on? Um, holy no, for real. It's like, as the games kept going, um, you know what I'm saying? It was really just, you feel me? It was all coming together, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, yeah. 
what would you say was the strength? The strength? The, the strength of the team that that helped you guys just uh, get that winning streak. What do, you, what do you mean by strength? The strength of the team. The strength of the team. Be, be. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you got, you got that one. <laughs> the strength of the team, we all like stick by each other, you know. Yes. We, yeah, it was like losing, but we all kept our heads up. No one ever like pouted. <clears throat> but at the end, win and win a chicken dinner. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Um, <laughs> for for you guys, I know he said the Somerville game, but what other games for you guys did you think? Um, you guys really kind of show like the fight and uh, kind of perseverance that you need. Yeah, Swamp Scott. Swamp Scott. Yeah, tell, tell, tell me about that game. I wasn't there, so I need y'all to Scott, tell me um, about that game. That game, we was like blowing them out, and then like they kept like they. No, was, actually, you weren't there the very first game versus Swamp Scott. Was that the one you guys are alluding to? Yeah, the first one. Yeah, so the first game. The first game. Um, you guys want to answer? Eli, Eli was there. You want to answer it? So what about the game? So he said, <clears throat> outside of Somerville, uh, what other game was challenging that helped us like overcome and persevere? And some of you guys said Swampscott. That game was special for you. I remember he hit a big three. Um, okay, Mr. Clutch. Down the stretch. Mr. Clutch. Put us over the hump. All right. Yeah, Swampscott was a really good team. They were hard to beat. Before they were just going back and forth. Yeah. And I don't really know. Is it was it one of those games that was just back and forth game the entire way? Um kind yeah. of to the end. Yeah, yeah. So um late game execution and back and forth games is kind of, is very key. Um playing smart is very key too. Um how are you guys able to execute the execute the game plan down the stretch without, you know, sometimes sometimes people overthink when they just keep it, keep it simple, but how were you guys just able to keep y'all composure and uh, execute the game plan in, a, in those close, in that close game? Team effort. Team effort, yeah. That's not getting nervous. Um, even though it was, it was close, like, I don't know. We just didn't think about it. We just played our game. Yeah, yeah. so basically y'all just, play, just played. Y'all didn't, didn't think too much and just played. Okay. Um, which player, I mean, actually, no, different question. Um, were there any nerves from you guys' this first game on freshman? And, to, and then at which point did, like, the nerves go away? Because you know, when you get to high school, you kind of get nervous. But Now, which game? Mike. Oh. Mike. Probably Swampscott. They were big and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah. You shouldn't be scared of no height. <laughs> oh man, okay. uh, Chelsea game. Mm. Another one. That that mm. last game. That was that was a close game until like the fourth quarter. Well, you guys were up. They came back. You guys went up again. They came back. Fourth quarter. Then you guys started really hitting the shots. Uh, was, did you guys just had a good feeling offensively? Because I think I don't know how many threes you guys hit that game, but it was a lot, and everybody was uh, everybody was on their game that one. I forgot Chelsea. Chelsea was the last game. The last one. Pat Mike. You know, that game, you know, it was like when they started hitting those threes, that's when we all needed to lock, lock in mm -hmm. and stuff. And then when, like, when we all decided to lock in, we all got the momentum. He started subbing the bench and they started doing their thing. The starters, everyone started doing their thing. And that's when we knew it was going to blow them out. Yeah. Was that one of the more better all-around games to, to close out the season? That one? Yeah, or, much. <clears throat> I mean, for me, it was the icing on the cake. Um, but to reiterate to some of your questions, the Swampscott game, some of the, even the very last game, um, reason why we were able to pull these things off, um, and I don't mean to, like, take credit for, for you know, all of it. Um, I because, take the credit. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it starts with me, right? So. Right. I, throughout those uh, hard times, I kept my composure as a coach. Hey. Um, I even remember um, that very last game versus Chelsea. We were down at halftime and we go downstairs and, um, you know, we're distraught. Like, what is happening? We might lose, you know what I mean? And all I kept saying is, right throughout those times, all I kept telling them over and over again is, guys, we're all right. You know what I mean? Even, even when we were down at times, like, 
we're all right. You know what I mean? And we always uh, put our faith in God prior. We always pray before each game. So, um, again, I feel like the Lord had already given me the provision of us going all the way. Right. But even with that, you still have to go through through the trials, right? So as we're going through the trials, um, your faith is being tested. So um, even though when we face those challenging times, I just knew it starts with me and my demeanor. And right. if, I'm, if I'm all over the place and I'm out of control, then they're going to read that, right? Even my, my point guard, like, I could tell he wanted it so bad, um, that very last game, for us to go undefeated. And because of that, we were pressing, mm. like, you know, putting pressure on ourselves. And at halftime, I had to bring him in also and say, like, you know, we're, we're good. Trust your teammates. Don't over... Um, elaborate the 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 negatives right don't keep your team together because yeah. he's he's an extension of me right so usually the point guard is an extension of, of the coach so he started to calm down right it starts with me he started to calm down we go like farhan said we go back to our basics right so i put the original starters um that had usually started throughout the year i yeah. switched it up here and there but i went back to what i knew is what, what was our bread and butter. And <clears throat> we started to press, which is, again, another one of our uh, fortes. And we just opened it up, right? Yeah. They stayed together, like they said. Um, we stayed the course. Mm -hmm. We stayed um, even keel. And, and then we just pulled away and, and blew them out. Uh, and some of you guys, I know some of you guys are were on JV as well. And then next year, I know you're hoping to be on varsity. but. For each player, what is something you have to do this off season to to work on your game? Well, what aspect of your game do you have to work on this off season so you know you could get that chance to either be on JV, to either be on varsity or JV, or you know play both ways for next year? Um, it's really it's really stamina, you know, okay. speed, you know, all the freshman JV varsity, all different speeds. Mm -hmm. The pace is very different, so you know, so you need to work on that yeah. and strength too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like he said, but I also got to work on my finishing, driving. Yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> you get to the cup, but sometimes, uh, sometimes you be leaving it short. Oh man, come on, man! I can't leave points like that. Goes with stamina, right? Yeah, you gotta run them hills. Mm -hmm. Go up, uh, go up, uh, Manning Field. A couple more swing players. Yeah. What you need to do to improve? Um, the big, biggest thing for me was like stamina, hitting shots. And obviously the biggest difference between like the freshman and JV varsity level is like just physical attributes, strength, yeah. stamina, stuff like that. All right, all right, cool, cool. Well, I mean, I'm looking forward to see y'all next year, see where y'all play next year, especially you. Everybody's telling me about you, so they said they say you next. So y'all gotta put the- gotta Quick put as the work lightning in. right there. Yeah, y'all gotta put the work in. You play football too? Nah. Why not? No. You play football? Nah. Baseball? Nah. Only basketball? Yeah. Any of you guys play two sports? Some of them are here. Oh, he does. Oh, he he does. plays baseball. He right plays baseball? Yeah. Yeah. Why don't some of y'all play football? I don't know. Too rough. What do you mean too rough? It's not really, it's not really <laughs> for me. I feel like I got injured out there. Yeah, like yeah. the size. Like Brain injury. It's not even the size, bro. It's the injury. And the weight. Like, oh. there's 300 pound line. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are 15, 16. Y'all, y'all will be, y'all will be all right. Y'all will be all right. I'll say this real quick off of that topic, and I hope you guys take this. Um, out of my own experience, I stayed away from football just like them, right? From because basketball is my main sport, and I didn't want to get hurt. But now, fast forward, I do regret not going out there and trying it, and and being out there as a receiver. And if if you're quick and, and you're agile, you're able to avoid those hits. Yeah. Um, so, as you guys go along, try not to have regrets in your career, right? So, if if we're at any point you think like maybe you can add to uh, the football team or whatever it is, just do it. Because then when it's over, you're gonna look back and be like, "Man, I wish I would have did it." Yeah. Just try out. <laughs> just try. Where? Worst thing, you might not like it. You're like, all right, I don't like it, try. but you might end up loving it. And also, you guys say you need to wait. Facts, facts, facts. Go talk to Coach Vaughn. My, yeah, yeah. my, man. my guy. 
appreciate Fellas, you having us. Appreciate man. it. Looking forward to seeing some of y'all JV varsity next year. You too. You too. <laughs> y'all the future backhorse, so y'all better get in that lab early. All right. Uh, yeah, Pedro got to go, so we got to get out of here ourselves. Uh, you'll be watching Athletes Corner. Thank you to freshman team yes, for coming sir. by. We are out of here. <laughs>
And then, and then, you know, what this guy likes is the women. <laughs> so, the, so the women, so the Houston bottle service, all the bottle service girls in Houston are happy he's coming around. <laughs> uh, oh, they also lost um, Gabe Davis, the Bills. Oh. Yeah, they lost that. Hey. So. They, they might be going back to being the Buffalo Bums. I mean, you know, we was talking about they they missed their they missed their chance. They had their they had their window. Like this was the year to be Kansas City. <laughs> but you know, they they might they might pick up a few a few players themselves. So we just gotta you know wait out and see. Yeah, we, yeah, we we shall see. We shall see. We shall see. Um, what else was there? Any other NFL stuff that happened? Oh, um, hope not. Uh, oh, just just <laughs> just the Chiefs Chiefs uh, receiver that what was it? Were, apparently they were speed right? they were racing and he crashed. He crashed his Lamborghini in, into other into some vehicles and then left the car in the scene. So I think there was like a warrant out for him. They might die. No, nobody uh, died. Cool. Luckily, but as long as nobody dead, man. But yeah. yeah, just man, be smart on the road, man. Hopefully you. He handles that situation. Yeah, stop speeding, people. Yeah, man, come on, be smarter. Yeah, stop speeding. Uh, this was kind of a sad one. Vontae Davis, he passed away at 35. They found him. Jesus. Yeah, they found him. Um, they found him dead in his home. It was like they said there was no foul play. Was that Vernon and, Davis's brother? Yeah. Yeah. Damn. So, and then I think I read somebody there like he was like he was like having issues with mental health for for a little bit. Oh, so, man, sorry to hear that. Yeah, 35 years old. But he still has the funniest retirement in NFL history when uh, he retired at halftime of a game. Yeah, I remember that. And then, which was the funniest, funniest thing that I've ever seen in my life. But uh, rest in peace to him. Uh, is there any other one? Oh, Brownie James has entered the transfer portal. Good for him. I feel like everybody just is. It, uh, everybody enters the transfer portal. It's just like. And sometimes I'd be, I'd be like, sometimes I'm like, maybe y'all should stay and like develop, but I don't know. Some people just leave because they're not getting playing time. Some people leave for other reasons, and you know, everybody just transfers nowadays. Um, I feel people need to just stand on decisions they make, so they can't be like I'm ten toes down because nobody yeah. really is, especially this generation because they always bail on out of stuff. Yeah. So if you gotta make a decision, why don't you think about it before you actually jump in there? And they get mad that you're not getting what you did. You didn't. You're not getting what you were promised, or you, you're not getting what you thought you were supposed to get. You know, you disregard a message that was telling you you wasn't getting it. Right. So, um, just be smart of your decision. Actually, listen and think, and yeah. be patient when it comes to these. Be patient when it comes to important decisions in life. Don't just jump into it. Right. Right. You know. And then, some, and then sometimes, like, when you read about players when you, and then, like, the season starts, you see, like, a player at a different school, you're thinking they're there, and then you look up, he's like, oh, no, this is, like, the third school he's been at. And I'm like, oh, why are we transferring, like, two, three times in a four-year, four- or five-year span? Like, come on, it's kind of... This is also why a lot of a lot of guys they don't make it to the league because you're not like your development isn't getting there because you keep leaving at every stop. You know yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, you can only tell people so much. So it all starts at home. So whatever backbone you have, use it. Did that helps in your decision making and you staying places and fighting through things yeah. fighting through adversity or just obstacles as yeah. i like to call adversity <laughs> yeah def definitely definitely and then last thing did you did you catch some of the mcdonald's all-american game no i missed it i was oh. gonna watch the little highlights on youtube i usually watch the condensed game sometimes and yeah, stuff yeah, like yeah, that. yeah yeah i i forgot it was on so i actually I, t I changed the ESPN because I thought they had a NBA was on today, was on that night, but I was like, I caught it in the second half, in the second quarter, so I, I watched them the second quarter. Oh, it was a good game, actually, a really, really, really good game. Came Let's down to go. the, came down to the last like the last play. Um, the East team won by three points. So, but yeah, it was really, really Dylan good. Dylan Hopper MVP, right? I believe so. Yeah. Bad man. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. Them dudes was. <laughs> That dudes was doing some stuff out on the breaks. I was like, man. Yeah, them boys. Even nice. um, the dude Derek Queen, big boy, mm -hmm. big boy. He he was uh, yeah. Maryland got a good one with, with him. So yeah, you you seen you seen that Malverde team. I mean, I watched them all season. Yeah. So like he was their big. Yeah. With Cooper. And Derek and uh, the little dude White, right point guard, and yeah, yeah it's like like four of the guys that can all Americans, I think. Yeah, yeah, but oh yeah, and, and, and McNeely, the shooter. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, nah, he hit some shots. And I was like, yo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, all in all, it was a good, it was a good game. It was a really good game. I, uh, well, I actually, well, I actually stayed awake and watched the whole thing. So, uh, all right. Um, we got anything for boxing, Pedro? Uh, last week, uh, we had Jesus. Uh, uh, here it is. Uh, we had last week um, Fandora against uh, Tim Zhu yep. the, on the main event, and then uh, we had uh, uh, Rollies uh, Romero against uh, Isaac Pitbull Cruz. Okay. Uh, he called him the Little Chihuahua, but. He, he knocked them out. He so. knocked them out. Yeah, he did. I heard. Congratulations Congrats, to him. Congrats, man, on him. Absolutely. I'm still, rooting, I'm still rooting against him. <laughs> it's a great fight, man. And, uh, of course, the, uh, the main event, uh, Tim Zhu got cut on top of his head, and he was bloodied up all all night. They should have stopped the fight, but they didn't. And uh, Fandara uh, ended up winning a uh, split decision. Okay. Well, well, Lisa, we got knocked out. Uh, at the end of- it was a great fight, man. Uh, I, I, I think that um, his corner, uh, Tim Zhu's corner, uh, should have stopped the fight. Mm. I mean, when you have okay. a gash on your head. Yeah, yeah, you, you, yeah, you should, yeah, any, you shouldn't be fighting any head injuries like that. You shouldn't be fighting. All right, thanks for that, Pedro. Uh, yeah, oh, real quick. Uh, uh, so again, the next couple of weeks, we have uh, another big fight. Uh, David Haney against. Yep. Uh, uh, Ryan Garcia. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you think, uh, what are you rooting for? I got <laughs> What? Me too, me too. <laughs> There's no question about that. I, I don't yeah. even know how Ryan is getting mm-hmm. these fights. I mean, I get it, yeah. but like, I thought it was a pecking order. Yeah, and I thought he yeah. fell down after he didn't even finish the fight. Uh, I, I just hope he got his mind right. <laughs> that's all, all, stuff, that's all I'm saying. That's all the stuff he be doing on social media. Uh, All righty, thanks, Pedro, for that. All right, all right, we got you know we'll throw this old school highlight some game. This is a Helen Ridley Helen Ridley at Lynn Classical. Check these highlights out. Check these highlights. Then I put up top ten plays from the high school hoop season. Check that out. We're gonna wrap this thing up because we gotta go. I need to take a nap. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's me, Mukala Kabongo, with the high school basketball season coming to an end. I feel it's right that I give you my top 10 moments from the 2023-2024 high school basketball season. Here we go. 
All right, we're going to start off with number 10. This was a non-league matchup late in February between Lynn English and Cambridge. Bulldogs was the home team. Cambridge had a lead late in this game, but the Bulldogs senior Kyle Kamembin took over late in the game by scoring nine of the final Bulldogs' 11 baskets, which included the go-ahead baskets to put the Bulldogs up late in the fourth quarter. Kamembin, Kamembin drove to the basket. He got fouled. Completed the three-point play and gave the Bulldogs the lead and they would not look back and they would go on to win this one. At number nine, we go to Boston College High where Boston College High hosted Lawrence High in a non-league matchup. This one was a really good game. BC High was in full control of this game through three quarters, even in that, even late in that fourth quarter. The Eagles were in control, but Lawrence mounted a comeback thanks to guard OB Luciano, who scored 20 points in that fourth quarter to help catapult a Lawrence Lancers run late in that fourth quarter. Lancers would come out with the victory. Luciano would finish with 28 points in that game. It was a big win for Lawrence High. All right, at number eight, we go to the Boston City League matchup. This was between the top two teams in the Boston City League, Charlestown and Burke, with Charlestown being the host team. Late in the fourth quarter, the Townies was, were up 78-75 with time running down, but Denison Fanfan would get a chance to tie the game up. First, he'd miss the shot, but Burke would get the offensive rebound, and Fanfan would double clutch in the corner. Throw the shot up, nail it, send the game to double overtime. It was one hell of a basketball game in a packed house at Charlestown. The Townies would eventually win in overtime, but Fan Fan's game tying three was one of the big moments in that game. All right, at number seven, we are going to go to Charlestown versus Catholic Memorial at the annual Comcast Invitational. This was the championship game of the Comcast Invitational. Josiah Adamson, freshman for Catholic Memorial, he would get the ball. He's on the break and he's going to the basket. Jalen William Crawford, a very good shot blocker for Charlestown, would try to block this one, but Adamson would not allow it as he put Williams Crawford on a poster with a big finish. Play of the day for that game, but in the end, Charlestown will come out victorious and win the, Charles, the Comcast Invitational. All right, we're going to the state semifinals in division number two. This time we are at UMass Boston. We have Bedford, we have Sharon. And Bedford looked like they were in full control and was about to come out with the victory in this one, but they missed some free throws. The key free throws missed late in the game, and then Jacob McLaughlin, he would find Jackson Rava deep in the corner by the Sharon bench. Rava would throw up the shot, and it'd be nothing but net to give Sharon the lead for good. Bedford tried, but their last ditch, effect, their last ditch effort fell short. Sharon will go on to the Division II state championship game where they would play Malden Catholic or they would eventually fall to Malden Catholic in the Division II state championship game. But the big shot from Jackson Rava really put them in that game. That was a big shot, big time play by a big time. We are at number five now. We're going to go to St. Mary's for the Spartan Classic. This time it's the championship game of the Spartan Classic between the Lady Spartans and Oliver Ames. Oliver Ames would take a 49-48-3 after a three-pointer late in that fourth quarter, but the Spartans still had some time on timeouts left, so they called the timeout. Some late late in the game, Spartans would draw up a play for Jillian Roberts, who would get the ball in the corner, throw up the shot, and sink it to give the Spartans the lead and give them the Spartan Classic Championship. This was their second year in a row where they won the Spartan Classic on a buzzer beater. What a game for the Lady Spartans. What a shot by Jillian. <laughs> At number four, we are going to the Comcast Invitational. This was the first round matchup between Charlestown and Needham. We were tied up late in this game and Charlestown had about 1.6 or 1.7, 1 point something left on the game clock in regulation in a tied game. So they would drop a play that was originally supposed to go somewhere to the basket, but Needham played it well, so they found Demonte Van Hennigan 
forward for the three-pointer, and he just launched it from damn near half court, sunk it. Charlestown won it. They will end up winning the Comcast Invitational. They will end up going to win the Boston City League Tournament Championship, and then they would end up winning the state championship. So that shot by DeMonte catapulted Charlestown into that state championship run that they had this season. Big time shot by big time player. Number three, we are going to every high. We got a Greater Boston League matchup between the top two teams in the Greater Boston League, Lynn English, and Everett, this game had many implications. The winner will be on, will be well on their way to win the Greater Boston League regular season crown. Everett trying to complete the season series sweep against the Bulldogs after defeating them earlier in the season. Man, the Crimson, they came out, they came out on fire. They built a 22-point lead and it looked bleak for the Bulldogs, but in the second half, Lynn English would mount a comeback. They were down. They needed baskets, they got defensive stops, and when a time when they needed a foul just to give themselves more time, then the English senior Paul Will Deng would come up with a big steal late in that game as the Bulldogs were only down one, and then Paul Will would get fouled on his way to the basket. Now he needed to make two free throws to give the Bulldogs the victory, but first he needed to make one to tie the game up. Dang went to the free throw line, sinked the first one with ease. The crowd was going crazy. The Bulldogs cheering section was going wild. The fans were going wild after that first make. And then Paul Will on the second one. Didn't knock it down, but if you want, but senior Kyle Kamembin was able to put himself in position to get the offensive rebound. It was a scramble for the ball. The ball ends up in Pierre Varis' hands, and he just sunk the basket in there. Bulldogs would go on and win the game, storm the court, talk trash to the crowd. It was one heck of a game, one hell of a basketball game between those two teams. And Lynn English would, eventually, would end up winning the Greater Boston League regular season crown because of that game. At number two, we are going to Boston College versus Malden Catholic at Malden Catholic. I mean, this game definitely lived up to the hype and it showed why the Catholic Conference is one of the best leagues in the state. Both of these teams had state championship aspirations this season. But the Lancers, they were in full control of this game, had a lead, had a double digit lead going into the fourth quarter. But in that fourth quarter, Boston College High would make a run, and this was led by senior Ivan Yombi, who scored 17 straight points for the Eagles. And after the Eagles got a late stop, after Yombi tied the game up at 59, it would be Yombi once again who would get the ball. He'd drive to the basket, crossover, floater, shot is good. BC High wins it 61-59, the bench clears, Everyone's excited for BC High. It was one heck of a basketball game. Man, man, big time players making big time plays. Like I said, 17 straight points for Ivan Yombi in that game against Malden Catholic. One of the best games of the year. And at number one, we are going to the Division I state semifinals game between Zavarian and number one seed Worcester North. Zavarian took a two-point lead late in that game after a big shot down the stretch to give themselves the 46-44 lead and Zavarian looked like they were on their way to victory and on their way to the state championship but the defending champs had one last ditch effort in them senior big man Tashawn Steele would get fouled on the out-of-bounds play as he was cut into the basket Thought he was going to get the three-point play, but the shot didn't fall. And these were two of the biggest free throws I've seen of any player. Two of the biggest free throws of Steele's career to try to tie the game up and keep their season alive. Steele would get to the line. He would calmly drain the first free throw. And the, and the second one, which was the biggest one of them all, he would calmly drain that one. He, they tied the game up at 46. The defending champs would force overtime, and the overtime, they took complete control of that game and were able to go on and win and head back to the state championship for a second straight year, where they once again completed another championship season by defeating Franklin to become Division I state championship. So, 
congratulations to Worcester North on a great championship season. And congratulations to all the players we just named on these moments, man. Basketball season was fun. I had a lot of fun this season going around the state, covering a lot of players, seeing a lot of great, great games, seeing a lot of great athletes on display. So congratulations to everyone on one heck of a basketball season, man. That's it. I'm out of here. I hope you all enjoyed this. I'm Kyle Kabongo signing out. Have a good one, ladies and gentlemen. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we, come, we have come to an end. Uh, let me see what we got. Oh, shout out all the players that received their plaques, that got their plaques. Um, yeah, you know, kudos. That's dope. Kudos. Um, we got to shout out some folks that um, Mikey Quintana at Energy Cafe, Tony Gallo, um, Brian Castellanos, Fred Hogan, AC Johnson. Um, who else, who else, who else? Lenny Pena, my cousin. If I forgot anybody else, but my bad. But those are all people that helped make those plaques possible. They made donations oh, to get oh, those plaques. I, I so, didn't know you was able to make donations. Yeah, so mm -hmm. shout out to all them folks that did it. Um, any birthday shout outs you got to get before you get out of here? Nah, not the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. Nah, nah. Uh -oh. Yeah, I can't. I can't. <laughs> I think my little cousin's birthday sometime. It's coming up. I forget what day. But um, yeah. I need to stop sketching. Follow, follow, follow us everywhere. Um, LinTV.org. Make sure you go to the website. All that good stuff. Yeah, man. We'll see y'all. We're out of here. I don't like this rain, man. I don't like it. I don't like it.